Okay, this is going to be how to remove a key and put it back onto your MacBook in order to get something like this. Okay, so I'm going to be doing the B key here. Um, it gets a little bit hard to see up close, um, but as we look at the mechanism under the key, um, you may be able to see that it kind of crisscrosses. There's two pieces under there. Um, and the piece, it, it crisscrosses one side going up this way, one side going up this way. Um, and there are two points where the key snaps on here and here, and two more over here and over here. Because of the crisscrossing nature of the plastic pieces underneath there, um, one end is a little bit narrower than the connections that are on the other end. Uh, to make it a little bit easier on the computer, uh, we're going to want to actually pop off the narrower side first, which on this computer happens to be over here. Now some MacBooks are going to have them arranged uh, crisscrossing up this way and up this way, as opposed to this way and this way. So you're going to have to come at it uh, from the side rather than the, the bottom or the top like I'm doing here. But uh, let's go ahead and get this popped off. Um, if I get underneath there, uh, I want to get in between the key and that plastic. Uh, so you can see I popped off the, the left side first um, and underneath that that pops off the key without taking off the mechanism there. Now if we uh, if we look carefully at the bottom of the key you can actually see um, these two sides the two pieces on this side uh, it just snaps in to the little tiny plastic pegs sticking off of that bit right there. Um, on the other side, they actually hook underneath these little tiny tabs right there. Yep. Um, and so we want to. That's why we want to pop off the narrow side rather than popping off this side. We want to slide that side gently off. So to get the key back on, because of the sliding this side on the on the on this side over here hooking onto this we want to set it on slightly to the side and slide it to the left as we type it on and now the key works just fine um, if everything goes well you should have no problem replacing keys um, I, I did I did the whole keyboard and I didn't mess up a, a, a single one of them but I, I did have to come across an extra set of keys. To get the extra keys uh, I had to come across a black, they call this a top case, um, and not all the keys like I said are, are universal. And you're, if you are going to do something like this you need to make sure that you've got a top case that matches up with the kind of computer you've got. Uh, the, about the easiest way to tell is by looking at the, the row of keys right across here. Uh, the newer MacBooks have special keys assigned to these, the special functions assigned to these keys here and different symbols on them than I have. Uh, so as long as you've got a, a MacBook with keys that, that have the same kind of symbols on them, especially up here on the, on the early F keys, uh, you should be able to transpose them from either keyboard onto the other one. Um, and then the neat thing is that you're left over with uh, this same pattern of keys on the other one. If you happen to own a black and a white MacBook, you could have inverse versions of each other with a power button. The power button was a little more difficult. Uh, I had to take off the whole top case. Uh, and uh, the power button is actually wedged underneath some pieces of metal in there, which I had to bend apart. I had to separate the metal, pry the, the MacBook key or MacBook power button out of there, and then slide the new one into it, mashing the metal back into place. I, I wouldn't recommend doing that one. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, and it's easy to lose some screws as you're taking the computer apart. However, if you if you're if you're fairly technical, if you've taken a few things apart, it is not a huge challenge to take these computers apart. Uh, there, there are a few things to, to keep in mind as you're taking them apart. Uh, if you were interested in taking them apart, I would check out ifixit.com. I love that website. They'll help you out quite a lot. Uh, again, that has been my uh, description of how to replace the MacBook keys. Thanks for paying attention.